Hello, insiders. My name is Alina. I'm a product specialist for YouTube Analytics based in London. And today I'm happy to introduce you a new revenue metric called RPM, which is revenue per thousand views. And here are some backgrounds about this metric. So all creators want to know how well they monetize on YouTube. And there are two ways to do that. One is playback-based CPM, which is a price of how much advertisers uh, pay per thousand monetized views. It's a great metric to know how much advertisers are paying, but it has a couple of caveats because it's before revenue share and it only includes uh, monetized views on your channel. There is also a second way, which is dividing your total revenue by your total views, which is intuitively correct, but because of the way how YouTube data works and the way how revenue data comes into the product, the calculation itself might be a bit wrong in the end. So today we're introducing a new metric where we do the math for you. Also, RPM can be a bit lower than CPM because it's using revenue after ref share and includes all the views. And just a reminder, it's just a revenue rate metric, so it doesn't affect your final earnings. It can be quite a nuanced topic and we're gonna talk about it with Farouk, who is a product manager for YouTube Analytics based in Zurich. Let's start at the top. Can you help to define RPM for us? Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Lena, for that intro. Uh, it's a great uh, intro for the topic. So definition for RPM. One of the things we try to do is try to keep the definition really, really simple um, so that it's intuitive. Uh, and creators understand this really well as well. The definition is basically all your earned revenue as a creator divided by all the views that you get times 1,000. So in other ways, it's essentially earnings per view, and then we multiply it by 1,000 to make it easier number to remember. Now, let's go a little bit deeper into both of those pieces, which is revenue and views. Right. So revenue or earned revenue is all the revenue you've earned as a creator across all the potential uh, business models possible on uh, YouTube, at least through YouTube. And those are ads, premium subscription revenue, memberships revenue, super chat and super stickers. So all of those revenue, all of those pieces of revenue that you earned as a creator divide by all views, and these are private, public, all the views that you see in YTA, includes views that had ads, did not have ads, all of it. So all your revenue divided by all your views times 1,000. OK, so technically, creators can calculate this themselves, right? Yeah, so this is existing data in YTA. But I think uh, you spoke about this earlier, Lena. Is like one of the challenges to calculate this directly is first, obviously, you have to calculate it every time yourself manually. Um, and the other nuance also is that uh, sometimes views data is much more updated. In fact, you even have real time views in YTA. And revenue can be a little bit later. Uh, so, but let's take an example. Let's say you want to assess an RPM of a recently published video. And then you say, OK, let me look at the last seven days of data. It could be the case that in the last seven days of data, you only have, let's say, about five days of revenue and then seven days of views. So obviously, that's not going to give you the right number. So that's why what we said is, OK, this is anyway how creators are calculating it. Let's help them calculate it, and let's calculate it correctly so that they don't have to do it. So that's the summary of the, of the metric itself. OK. So let's talk maybe a bit more about the differences between RPM and the metrics that already exist in YT, for example, playback-based CPM. Yeah, great. So let's start with playback-based CPM. So what is playback-based CPM? It's the average price that advertisers pay per monetized playback. Now, what's the monetized playback? It's a view that had ads on it, right? So if you wanted to know, what is, an, uh, what is an average price that advertisers paid for every view that had ads? Playback-based CPM is your answer. Now, what is the difference from RPM? I think it's useful to know what advertisers are paying. But if you step back and said, what am I earning on a per view basis? There's a few gaps. And there's three gaps. One is playback-based CPM only talks about, only includes ads revenue. 
right? And the second one is its revenue that's before subtracting YouTube's rev share. So this is actually what advertisers are paying and doesn't give you what you will finally earn after revenue share. And the third one is that it actually focuses just on the views that had ads. And obviously, if you have a channel, you have lots of views. Some of those views would have had ads, and some of those views would not have had ads. And so playback based CPM only uses the views that had ads. OK, so can you maybe explain a little bit more monetized playbacks and why they might not give the whole picture that creators want? Yeah, let's, let's take an example, right? So quick summary of the definition again. It's the average price that advertisers are paying per view that had an ad. So let's say that 10% of your of a particular video had ad ads and your playback pay CPM was $2. It could be that another video had 50% of views had ads and it could still be $2. But there is a big difference between those two right because in one case 90% of your views did not have ads and in another case 50% of them did not have ads but you're not seeing a difference in playback based cpm because playback based cpm is only looking at the views that got ads so that's why rpm looks at all the views and it accounts for the fact that some views some videos will have few views with ads and some videos might have lots of views with ads so it gives you a fuller picture okay am i monetizing well on this video or channel. Uh, and so that's the difference why Mortise playbacks and playback by CPM might be restrictive uh, if you want to understand your overall channel monetization rate. OK, Swarup, so we should expect RPM to be lower than playback by CPM. Is that right? Yeah, I think typically for most users, RPM um, could be lower than playback by CPM. And that's because of two reasons. CPM, as we said, is what advertisers pay. So it's before YouTube revenue share versus RPM is using what you earn as a creator. So it's typically lower than what the total uh, advertiser revenue is. Also, um, RPM is an average across all your views versus playback based CPM is averaging only across views that had ads. So normally when you have a bigger number in the denominator, like that means you're taking a certain amount of revenue and dividing by a lot of views or all your views in RPM case, it could be lower than playback based CPM as well. So those are two reasons why RPM be lower than your playback based CPM. Now that we have talked about the difference there uh, between RPM and playback based CPM, Arina, maybe you can talk a little bit more about what kind of data that you can get with RPM uh, on uh, YouTube Analytics today. Yeah, sure. So. RPM, first of all, RPM is available both at channel level and video level. So you can now review how different uh, how different videos have been uh, monetizing. Also, uh, if you, for example, have videos of a particular topic, say you have a cooking channel and you have videos with Italian recipes and you, you have a group of, that, uh, of those videos, you can also look at your RPM for, for a group, so on a group level. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, um, we also enabled the data for all historical periods, meaning that if you have been monetizing for a few years, uh, you can actually check uh, your, your RPM trends for, uh, for several years. And I think there are also a couple of particular cases, and let's maybe discuss those. So for example, memberships. Let's maybe dive into that topic. How does it work with RPM? Yeah, definitely. So memberships um, has uh, a, a unique way of uh, attributing revenue uh, to a video. So there's three types of membership revenue you could get. Like one is a member actually signs up um, for memberships. The second one is the member could be renewing their membership. And the third is that a member could be upgrading their membership. Now, the way the revenues are counted at the video level is that if a member signs up on a video, let's say in a particular month, what we do is every following month, we also attribute the upgrades and the renewals to that same video. 
So you might find in some cases that your video has a very high RPM because of memberships, and that's because that video has been accruing membership revenue from members who signed up in the past as well. OK, so that's about membership, Selena. Uh, now, as you've explained uh, a lot about RPM, creators might think, OK, that's good. I can understand what my uh, how well my channel is monetizing. And the almost immediate next step would be, OK, what can I do to increase it? So do you have some tips about how creators could think about increasing their RPM? Sure, there are a few ways how creators can improve their RPM. And because it's a ratio, uh, you can improve your numerator. And this means that you need to improve your total earnings. So don't forget to en enable monetization on all your videos and enable all ad formats on all eligible positions. Don't forget about mid rolls, for example. And if you're eligible, uh, please enable all alternative monetization features uh, that are there, for example, memberships, super chat, and so on. It will help you diversify your revenue streams a lot. I think we're almost uh, finished. So, so any other questions or feedback for our audience today? Yeah, um, absolutely. I think I would love to hear, and the team would love to hear more feedback about this metric, but also in general about how they understand and would like to understand revenue on YouTube as well. So please leave your feedback um, in the comments below, and we will review all the feedback. And hopefully, we'll be back soon on CI with an update based on that feedback. Thank you, Swarup. And thanks to our audience. And just a quick summary. RPM is a new revenue metric that uh, provides total earned revenue per 1,000 views. It's a revenue rate metric, so it doesn't change any, any of your final earnings. And it's likely to be a bit lower than playback-based CPM, but that's that's because it's calculated after after revenue share and averages earnings across all your views. So keep the feedback coming and keep it real.